Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and you guys asked for Valentine's Day DIYs and so that's what I have for you today. I have a total of 10 Valentine's Day DIYs. I made all of these using supplies from the Dollar Tree and these are 10 of my absolute favorite DIYs. So let's get started. Are you ready? Okay, our first Valentine's Day DIY, I'm going to use one of these little pink hearts. I just got one of those the other day from the Dollar Tree with the glitter all over it. One of the wood hearts from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to use one of these pieces of removable wallpaper in my favorite pattern, the tropical leaf pattern. So I wanted to do something really fun with these hearts so you will see how they turn out. So I'm just going to go ahead and just use the heart as a template to draw that out on the back of the wallpaper and I'm simply going to cut this out. Have you guys worked with this wallpaper before? I love it. I've used it on so many DIYs for every single season and it's just so beautiful. Look how pretty that is. I think that'd be really pretty if you were actually to cover a wall with it as well. So it's just a giant sticker now. So we're just going to peel and stick that onto the little heart, the wood heart that we have. And I love those. Those pieces are so easy to DIY with. I just got a couple more of those. Now I'm going to sand around the edges to make sure that I got perfect cut. And then I wanted to um, frame it out with some twine. This is a, the thicker twine that you get at Walmart. It's a little thicker than the twine that you get at the Dollar Tree. But I just wanted like a very simple rope border to go around this sign. And so I'm just going to use hot glue. And we're just going to glue this all the way around. So what I was thinking with this is I wanted something like really tropical, really coastal, but for Valentine's Day. And I think this turned out so fun. So that looks pretty good. We have a great back piece for the little heart. And I'm just going to poke holes so we can go ahead and reattach the hanger that came with it. And easy peasy, that's so much easier than painting it, right? And so I thought this heart could go on there, but I wanted to do something really fun with it. So I'm just going to remove the hanger and I'm going to use some of this pink burlap that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I thought that we can make these hearts look like flamingos, like two flamingo necks and like their little flamingo beaks like touching each other, like almost like kissing. And so I'm just simply wrapping the glitter with the pink burlap and it's going to just tone down that pink glitter. And this is like a kind of a perfect color, I think, for a flamingo. You can kind of still see a little bit of glitz and glam through the fabric, but that's okay. I think it toned it down a lot. So just went all the way around like that with the burlap until it's covered like this. That looks pretty cute like that, right? But I thought we can make this into flamingo. So to do that, I'm going to start with some um, chalk paint. This is the color ink. You don't have to use chalk paint, but it does work really well for coverage on fabric. And then I'm just going to start painting like where the beaks would be of the flamingos and just kind of kind of judging how big each one should be. So they're kind of like uniform. And can you already kind of see it where it's like two flamingos like kissing? I thought that was a really fun idea. It's not what I originally planned to do with this heart, but I was so glad I came up with this idea. Now I'm going to paint this part of the beak white. And that's going to kind of um, simulate like the way that a beak looks on a flamingo. 
And this is just like ivory paint and I'm just gonna do that on both sides. And then I was trying to think how I could do eyes for these flamingos. I thought about using like googly eyes or something like that, but I thought that would look, you know, kind of childlike and cartoonish. And I had some of these little wood half beads and I thought they'd be perfect because if you have them upside down, it's gonna give you a very like flat eyeball look, which is kind of like what a flamingo has. So I'm just gonna paint the back of those little wood rounds half beads and then once i get them painted like an ivory color i'm just going to draw like a very simple like pupil on there which is a black sharpie and i think this gave it a little bit more of an elegant look compared to like a googly eye and so i'm just going to attach those with hot glue kind of where i think they would go on a flamingo and we have two little kissing flamingos for Valentine's Day. Isn't that fun? I love this idea. So I'm gonna attach it to the heart sign that we made. That's gonna be the background. And so I'm just gonna go all over the back of it with hot glue. It is foam, but since I have the burlap on there now, it's not gonna cause any problems with the foam. And I'm gonna glue that down to the heart. Now, I wanted to make it a little bit more substantial. I thought that the Dollar Tree sign was a little thin, and so I'm actually gonna build it out a little bit more. Now, this is just a thrift flip sign that I found at Goodwill, and it had a great frame, but I just kinda wanted to cover the background. And so I am just creasing it out with some more of that removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree, and that way I'll know where to cut and I can get a pretty good estimate on of what I can use to cover that. And this is just like the white board. I did cut it a little thinner than I wanted, but that's okay, because I can always kind of patch it together here with a piece that was left over. And it was kind of a busy sign, and so this is just a quick, easy way to um, cover that up without painting it. So I'm just gonna peel and stick. I kinda like the color that the frame already is. It's kind of like a bluish green color. And so I think that's gonna make a fun background. And building this out on that, I'm just going to attach it to the frames with some hot glue on both sides. It's just gonna make the piece a little bit more substantial because I really hate the thin Dollar Tree sign sometime. I usually like to layer them. And so this is how it turned out, our little kissing flamingo heart. I think it's so fun, one of my very favorites. Okay, our next Valentine's DIY, we're gonna use one of these little wood shop sailboats from the toy department at the Dollar Tree and some felt heart stickers from the Dollar Tree as well. And this is my first time building one of these little sailboats from one of these kits, but it could not have been any easier. It comes with all of the wood and pieces that you would need. Now, I thought I can make it look a little bit better than just the raw wood. So I'm just gonna stain mine with a little antique wax by Waverly going over that wood just to kind of make it look a little bit more high end. And I'm just gonna go in and stain all the pieces now before I put it together. I thought it would be easier to do it now. And I'm just using a makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree and then just wiping off any excess with a paper towel. I love staining stuff with the Antique Wax by Waverly just because it is so quick and simple and you don't have to wait for anything to dry. So it's got like, these two little pieces here, the larger dowel, it's got the bottom of the boat, and you can see there's a couple other pieces as well. So this is a pretty simple construction for a sailboat, but it turned out really cute. I kind of like the simplicity of it, just a really fun DIY for Valentine's Day. So this is how you put it together. And don't worry, if you get one of these, it does have directions. I'm just gonna use hot glue to put it together. Um, it's just gonna make everything that much faster and easier, and it, it works pretty good for this as well. Use a little bit too much there on the back, and then we're gonna glue this piece down as well. And then we can start building this boat. 
So this is like the uh, mast of the little sailboat. And then this little piece goes here, coming out the bottom. And I did have a little trouble with hot gluing that, but it actually kind of worked better um, just kind of wedging it in there. I noticed that one of them was a little thicker than the other one. So I'm kind of seeing which one fits better in which hole because it's not going to be perfectly drilled out. And then just twist it around. <laughs> and now we have everything we need to make our little sailboat. So it comes with some string. So I'm going to kind of put that through the hole on the top. making sure I have that all glued down and then tying that off down here at the tip of that, pulling it tight and then tying it to the other side. Just a very simple construction for the sailboat, but it turned out really cute. Now for the sail, it came with like these little sails like this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start hot gluing that on just to the string, which makes this project go even easier. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here with the other sail. Just kind of using what came with it, but if you wanted to do like your own custom sail fabric, that would be really cute as well. And then I'm also gonna glue it to the bottom here. And I felt like a true uh, kid putting this together, but that's okay, it turned out really cute. Now I wanted to decorate this for Valentine's Day because you're like, Julie, this is a sailboat. What does it have to do with Valentine's Day? But I thought it would be a really cute little boat if I just take one of these little red felt stickers from the Dollar Tree and just decorate the sail. And now we have a little Valentine's Day decoration. Isn't it cute? I thought about using two, but I really liked one. I think it was really fun. And just a very quick, easy Dollar Tree DIY, you could even get the kids involved with this one. Okay, up next, we're gonna DIY one of these little wood hearts from the Dollar Tree. This is one of the slatted ones. What I'm gonna do is I wanna make this a driftwood heart for Valentine's Day, but I'm gonna kinda leave the slats open, and so I'm just staining those all with some antique wax by Waverly. Um, to kind of give them a finish to start with because it's easier to get to them at that point. Now I'm gonna use driftwood and I'm just going to cover like the individual slats of the heart with driftwood. And I am using the driftwood vase filler. I get this at Target. It's normally like $10 a box. It's a vase filler. So it's like back in that kind of department. At my Target is always on end stand, but it does go on sale from time to time. So I always try to stock up on this driftwood when it goes on sale because it's great to craft with. It's really flat. The pieces are really easy to glue together like that. So you can kind of see, I kind of had to, you know, kind of do a pattern around the bottom just to fill that all the way in. But when you get to like the different like slats of it like this, it gets a little bit easier um, cause you're just going straight across. And like I always say with these driftwood projects, it's just like putting together a puzzle. If one piece isn't going to work, you pick up another one and try it. And you just keep building and building until it's all filled in. I love making driftwood projects. They, I, they turn out so cute. And this is probably my favorite driftwood to work with. I have bought it from Amazon before. I do have some listed in my shop. You just don't get very many pieces with that. And it's usually kind of more of a rounded driftwood I have found. I really liked working with this flatter driftwood from Target. Now this top part is gonna be a little bit more challenging trying to do that shape, but you have all different shapes and sizes of these. So you can just keep playing around with it until it works. And I'm just attaching all of them with hot glue. If I have to overlap it a little bit um, with the piece next to it, I totally do. I will just glue those together. But basically I'm just trying to cover as much of this wood heart as I can with the driftwood. 
Now, as you can see, that stain that I did on the back slats, you know, is a lot darker than the driftwood. And that's the only thing I don't really like about the driftwood is that it's very light. But the great thing is that it's really easy to stain. So I'm just using a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and some more Antique Wax by Waverly and going all over this heart. And it really brings out the character in that wood and makes it look really fun for like a driftwood project. Most of my driftwood um, projects that I have bought are more kind of a, this color of a driftwood instead of that really light driftwood. And I kind of wanted to stain it a little bit because I kind of wanted to build out on this a little bit. I kind of wanted it to have a little bit of a darker background. So while it's here, I'm going to go ahead and make a hanger. I'm just going to take some twine, some of that thick twine and tie a knot. And I'm just going to attach that to the back here. And it's thick enough right here that I can just use a staple because we have all of that driftwood thickness as well. Now I thought I would decorate it. So I'm pulling out some of my collection. This is um, a starfish and a sand dollar that I got at Amazon. You can totally use the ones from a Dollar Tree as well. And um, I'm gonna do some seashells as well, just to kind of decorate it a little bit, just bring a little bit of fun to each tier of that little driftwood heart. And I'm just kind of moving them around, seeing where I like them. I like the size of those sand dollars. They're a little bit smaller than the ones from the Dollar Tree, but just kind of playing around with it until I get it the way that I like it. I kind of like using the ivory colors all together. It's a nice contrast against that darker driftwood. Just gonna finish it off here with another seashell. Look how cute that looks. I think this is really fun for Valentine's Day and really unexpected. And this is how our little driftwood slatted heart turned out from the Dollar Tree. So fun. Okay, the next DIY, I'm gonna use a thrifted sign from Goodwill. I think I got this half off, so it was like 50 cents. But if you don't have a sign or a thrifted sign, you could always use one of these signs from the Dollar Tree. It's gonna give you pretty much the same effect. And I just need to clean this up. I want to make my own canvas, and so I made my own fabric with sublimation. I did a video on this. I can't seem to find the footage of it, but I will share the design if you want to try this yourself with sublimation. You'd have to have a sublimation printer, or you can just print it out on paper and get the same effect with Mod Podge. So I was actually able to remove most of the image on there with just fingernail polish remover which was a nice a step here so that I can go ahead and kind of give myself a blank canvas here. I don't want any of that design coming through my fabric. So I'm just gonna cover the little thrifted sign with ivory acrylic. And that is gonna give us the perfect background to make our own little canvas here. I designed this image on Canva and I will share it for sure. And I'm just kind of using an ink pen to kind of um, map out exactly where I need to cut this to fit inside that frame on that picture. Isn't this pretty? And it really reminds me of that little sailboat that we made with the little heart on the sail. And then I had it say love across. I think it's so pretty. And I'm just going to basically decoupage that on there. So if you don't have a sublimation printer to make your own fabric like I did, you could always do this with paper but I love making my own fabric out of that white polyester from the Dollar Tree, it's so fun. So I just did a thick layer of Mod Podge, laid it down, and then I'm gonna also Mod Podge on top to make sure that this fabric is sealed down, and it just really kind of gives the appearance of a canvas. And then I thought it needed a little bit of bling, and I'm gonna use one of these little sequin um, heart that they have at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use the red one cause that's kind of what's on that boat. And I'm just gonna attach it to the fabric with some hot glue. And I think these are a great way to add some bling to your Valentine's Day DIY. And we have our little love boat here. Now I wanted to finish it off a little bit more with another like little coastal touch. So I'm gonna use some of this rope from the Dollar Tree. This is the thinner brown rope. And I'm just gonna frame that out. 
I always like a good rope border on things. I think it really provides a little bit more texture and it definitely gives a coastal touch to just about anything you use it on. And I'm just gonna use one piece, cut it off and hot glue that all the way around to finish off our little love boat canvas. And this is how it turned out. I think it's so fun. If I don't remember to post the link, remind me and I will post a link. Okay, are you ready for another Valentine DIY? I am going to use another thrifted sign. I think I got this one for $1.50. I kind of liked it because it was like slatted and wood and I thought I could make a nice beachy sign out of this but you can basically use whatever you've got. You can put a couple Dollar Tree signs together and get about the same size. I'm gonna cover it again with that removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree in my favorite design, these tropical leaves. As you can see though, it was a little bit shorter than my sign, but the great thing is, is the pattern repeats on these. See how you can line that up? Just like you were going to put it on a wall where you can have the pattern line up. And I'm just gonna use just a small piece of another one to finish off the bottom part of this sign. And I kind of wanted to do a background with this one as well. I'm gonna do another Valentine Thanksgiving um, DIY, but this one's gonna look a little bit different than the first one we did. So just using my sanding sponge to give myself a clean cut on the edge of my sign, it gives you the perfect cut. And I love working with this stuff. Now, if you remember that sign was slatted before, and I don't really wanna lose that, even though I covered it up with that, um, with this paper. So I'm kind of finding like where the slats are and kind of creasing that in between. It's kind of almost like cutting it. And then I'm just gonna go in and actually cut it with just a razor. So it looks like it's different slats of wood. I think that just kind of adds to the coastal feel. I like the board look. And then I'm also gonna sand and kind of distress that a little bit just to make it look a little bit more rustic. And just kind of sanding all over just to make sure everything is down. Everything's kind of got the same vibe and we have that beautiful background. Now, these are some more flamingos from the Dollar Tree. These two have their heads together and they have these cute little legs with their like knees touching. But you know I can't stand the spoil on these DIYs so I'm gonna take it off and use the cage. Now, usually when I take the tinsel foil off of these things from the Dollar Tree, you get like a great like plastic cage underneath. This came with like a solid cage that has like all the little pegs on the sides, which I wasn't really expecting. I guess I should have known by the way it looks on the back, but um, I'm gonna make it work. I just wanna recover that. You know, it is pr a really pretty color of pink, so you could leave it as is, but you're gonna be stuck with all those tabs along the outside. And it does have these little eyelashes as well, and like a paper beak, and so, I'm just removing that with some heat and I'm going to pop off the little eyelashes as well from our little flamingos. Now I'm going to kind of start trimming it up a little bit. So I'm going to kind of cut them apart right there and right here because we're going to attach that to that sign. So we're not going to need like those pieces connecting them um, for structure at all. They can just be connected at the knees. Now, I wanted like some kind of a pink fabric to cover it, but something fun and unexpected. And so I'm gonna use one of these little pink hand towels from the Dollar Tree. It's gonna give me that nice fluffy, like terry cloth fabric. And I'm gonna use that to actually cover the flamingos. So I'm kind of like, just kind of feeling where their legs are. I don't need to cover the leg parts. I'm just gonna need enough fabric to cover the flamingos. And kind of just cutting it into two pieces with definitely more fabric than what is needed. And I'm just gonna kind of work on one flamingo here at a time, but I'm gonna kind of use that as a template for the other piece. 
Okay, so I want to cover the flamingos with this fabric. Now, I thought I can just kind of cut here between the legs, a little slit, pull that up and start hot gluing that. I don't want too much excess fabric, but I want enough that I can cover up all of these tabs on there. I kind of wanted to go in and cut all of those off, but this was a really like brittle plastic material. I didn't think it was going to trim off too well, so I'm just gonna cover them up. So I'm just using hot glue to attach the extra fabric onto the back of the plastic flamingo. And I'm gonna keep doing that all the way around. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start on the head and the neck here, just kind of cutting off the fabric as I go and hot gluing that to the back, trying to get as good a coverage as I can without too much bulky fabric in the back causing trouble. And then the inside of the neck is a little bit of a trickier area, just cutting out any excess fabric. And again, just attaching that all with hot glue. And it gives it definitely a different look than the tinsel had on the flamingo. And I think it looks a little bit more fun and beachy. And I went ahead and did the same thing on the second one as well. And we have our two little terry cloth like flamingos. Now it does have the little holes there where the eye the eyelashes were before. They weren't really salvageable, so I kind of just left it as is. Kind of left a, a little hole there. Um, like a raised bump for the eyes, but that's okay. Now I wanted to kind of do just like a burlap ribbon here along the bottom, just to kind of create a bottom border to this sign. And then I'm going to use this little heart. This is a Christmas ornament that I got on clearance at Target, but you can use any kind of heart you've got. I liked the fact that this was this pretty color of wood and a really nice stain and it fit perfectly here in between our little flamingo legs. Now we're ready to go ahead and start gluing the flamingos down to the sign. Just kind of going around all the edges that are gonna connect with the sign and we're gonna attach our little flamingo. I want these flamingos to look like they're standing with like a tropical background, but I want them to look like little lovebirds. So I'm also gluing down just the legs and anywhere that I think needs it to make sure that that stays put. And I thought about covering those these with those little pink leather purses um, from the Dollar Tree. I have used that on flamingos before. That turns out really cute as well. Now I'm just gonna do some hand lettering on here with just a white paint pen and I'm gonna have it say lovebirds because that's what they are, right? And I'm just doing like a skinny font, like kind of like a redone font. If you don't feel it, you can let letter like that. You could always use stickers or your Cricut and do some lettering, but that looks pretty good. And then to cover the little hole in the ornament, I'm just gonna take some twine and we're just gonna tie off a very simple bow. It's such an easy way to cover holes in ornaments like that where you kind of want to cover that up. Just going to glue that down inside on our little lovebird sign. And I think this flamingo DIY turned out super cute as well. And this is how it looks. Very, very cute. Now I want to hang this sign on my wall. So this is kind of a palette sign. I'm just going to go ahead and use some twine. And um, since it's a thick sign, I can use my staple gun, tie some knots, and just make a very simple hanger for the back of this. I almost always use twine. Sometimes I like to use the little sawtooth hangers that you can just nail right in. They're so easy. And here's our little lovebird sign. I think it's so fun. Now I wanted to give it like another like coastal beachy touch. So I'm gonna use a sand dollar. This is one of the smaller ones that I got on Amazon, but you could totally use the bigger ones from the Dollar Tree as well, if you wanted to recreate. And I thought about a starfish too, but I kind of like it with just a sand dollar like that. And here is the final product. 
Our little towel flamingo lovebirds. I hope you enjoyed that DIY. This one is a sign that I got at the Dollar Tree. It says sisters before misters. I'm just going to go with it because I really like the little blue frame. It's got like this foam heart on it. So I'm going to kind of try to remove as much as that as I can without causing any damage. Because um, I kind of like the burlap that's on there. Um, the brown burlap. I think this is going to look really kind of coastal and fun with my decor. With that blue faux wood with that like sparkly burlap on there. And then I plan to cover up like the sisters before misters. And then this is just another sign that I got at the thrift store. It's the perfect size for this. And it's kind of cute because it was actually um, a seashell sign, but we're going to make this extra special. Now, instead of painting it, I'm going to use some more of that removable wallpaper. You guys know I love this stuff. And I'm going to use just like the white board pattern. Just such a quick, easy way to cover a sign like this. And you don't even have to wait for your paint to dry. So I just went ahead and put it on there and I'm just going to cut it with my sanding block. It's going to give me the perfect cut there. Along the bottom of the sign. Now it was a little too skinny to cover the entire sign. So I am going to have to use a second piece and kind of fill in the, the gap here on the side. And I actually had like a scrap piece where I can line up the board just right. So once I have like the next board that would be repeating in the pattern, I'm just going to go ahead and attach that to the sign. And then again, using my sandy block to cut that off. And this is going to give us a great background for that skinny Dollar Tree sign to make a very substantial piece. And you don't have like a skinny sign hanging on your wall. Just finishing up the sanding on that. Now I did want to distress it a little bit and I wanted to take care of these black sides. So I'm just going to use some acrylic paint and we're going to go all around the edges just because I thought the black was a little bit too much of a contrast for what we're going for on this sign. And I kind of want it to match the wallpaper on the sides. And then I thought it would be good to like distress, you know, with like a chunky brush, just to kind of, um, you know, make the boards look a little softer, kind of give it more of a coastal weathered beachy touch, just using a baby wipe to wipe off the excess. Now I was trying to get the glitter off of this, which, you know, you know how they are with glitter. I tried, <laughs> but I'm just going to go ahead and start painting over this where it says sisters before misters. And I'm just going over it with some white paint, trying to get as much coverage over the writing as possible because I kind of wanted to make my own sign on this, but I loved the blue faux wood on there and the burlap. So I kind of wanted to save those parts and just replace this middle part. If you had another like wood heart that was this size, you could totally just keep layering signs. But I didn't really have anything that size, so we're just going to make it look better with paint. So once I have like a good outline, I can go in with that white paint and just fill in the inside of our heart. And this is kind of going to give me a blank canvas to help me cover up all of that writing. Now this is some paint I'm using from Target. It's called Terracotta Pot. And I think it's a beautiful color. Look how pretty this is. I think it almost looks like a salmon color and I think it looks great with the blue. So I'm going to go over where I just painted it white, my blank canvas, and we're going to paint this heart pink. And I love using like traditional like Valentine's Day colors, like pink and stuff like that mixed together with my coastal blues. So once I have it outlined, I can just go ahead and fill in. This is a chalky acrylic that I got at Target. I'm just trying to go for maximum coverage to cover up all that glitter that was underneath of it. Now I'm going to use some of this twine from the Dollar Tree, 
but it's a little um, gnarly in some places. And so I like to go over it with a lighter first to burn off all the fuzzies and any of like the extra parts that are sticking out. And I thought we could use that twine to actually spell out our word on here. And I wanted to do like a curse of love. So I'm just gonna kind of start here with the top of the loop for the L and we're gonna do like some rope lettering. So using hot glue, I'm just gonna kind of loop that like on top, like a fancy L. We're gonna bring it down and then we're gonna loop it back the other direction, kind of like a cursive L, just kind of working one piece at a time. And this was actually easier to do than I expected. So I'm gonna go up and around to start an O. And then we're gonna kind of like do a little fancy loop across the O to come over and we're gonna spell out the word love like this. I thought this was really fun and I like the different textures. I think it looks great with my decor and it's just kind of unexpected. It makes this Dollar Tree sign look so much more high end. So love was actually a pretty easy word to spell out in cursive here. Just finishing up the E. And I want to kind of make it go all the way to the outside of the heart, kind of like I did at the beginning of the word. Then I needed to kind of cover up this place that had the little flower on there before. So I'm just going to use a starfish. And then we can attach our little heart sign from the Dollar Tree. I'm just using hot glue to attach it to our thrifted sign. And I think they look really nice together. I thought we could use that same twine that we spelled out the word love with to actually do the rope border around this. It's gonna give me a really thin rope border, but it's gonna finish up that seam in between the heart and the sign on the bottom. And I'm just hot gluing that all around. And I thought that was another fun touch on this project. Again, that twine from the Walmart, I would like love it because I love the thickness of it, but you definitely have to clean it up from time to time. Continuing to use hot glue all the way around. You could always use the thin Dollar Tree rope to border that out as well. But super cute. I hope they have these same exact hearts again this year. I haven't seen them yet. But then again, they only have a little bit of the Dollar Tree Valentine stuff out at some stores. Now I'm going to make a simple little expo here for the top. Just using some of that Dollar Tree burlap. I just cut it in half to make two little thinner strips. And we're just going to do a really simple expo. I got some pink ribbon from the Dollar Tree. This is just kind of like a sheer. And then I got some of this EXO ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to have to show you on my Valentine's Day haul. I got so many great Valentine ribbons. Um, so excited to craft with all of them. So we're just gonna do a simple expo, layering all those together and then tying that off with a zip tie. Such an easy um, DIY bow to do and it provides a fun little bow here. And I'm gonna kind of put that here on the other side from where we decorated with the starfish on the right side. And then this is from the Dollar Tree as well. It's a little pink burlap rose. It's got a little bit too much going on with the stem and stuff. Um, it's just making it kind of too thick to use the way that I wanted. And so I'm just kind of pulling off the papery part of that so that I can trim it down a little bit so it doesn't stick out as far. I just kind of want the burlap rosette part of it. And once I get it trimmed down, I'm just gonna use some hot glue and glue that right in the middle where I have the little zip tie on my Expo. And I love the rose for Valentine's Day. I think it gives it a nice little touch. Now, these are some of those laser cut craft um, board from the Dollar Tree. And these are just from the regular crafters section. And they have these beautiful little ornate hearts with like different cutouts. And I thought that would match really well. The brown is the same as like the rope. And it's going to provide another little Valentine touch right there underneath of our rope love word. And I love how this one turned out. I think it's so fun. Super cute. Okay, 
This is a Dollar Tree find. I got this great little love like arrow sign and I thought we could DIY this a little bit to make it look a little bit more nautical or coastal. Um, getting the back off of these signs sometimes, um, depending on how they put them together, can be a challenge, but I was able to pop that off and pull out the paper. Now, I thought we could like DIY this a little bit to make it look um, a little bit more Valentine's Day. And the first thing that I tried to do was to remove uh, the paint with some fingernail polish remover. And I have done this before, and I had no luck on that one whatsoever. So we're going to leave it the colors that it is. I was going to kind of change the colors up, but that's okay. And then I'm just going to use like a scrap piece of burlap to cover the back of that love sign to kind of give it just a nautical feel. I love working with burlap. And I had a scrap piece that's just about the right size. And we're just going to hot glue that on. It's just kind of the background to it. So um, if you were, you, whenever you hot glue burlap, it's going to show through a little bit, but um, I think we're going to be able to make that work. And I thought that would look really cute for a background for that sign. So I'm just going to trim off the excess burlap after recovering it. You know, I love to take a Dollar Tree sign and pull off the back and cover it with something. And whenever I can use fabric, it's a win-win. And then we can reattach that to our love sign. And I'm just going to glue it back on. Because I kind of had to break it out. And we're going to leave the red frame. What I wanted to do was I wanted the love to be like in white. Because I was kind of doing some red and white Valentine's Day DIYs. Since I was not able to get the lettering off with a fingernail polish remover, I'm just going to use it as a template to use a white paint pen. And then I can just go in and make the letters any color that I want. So I chose white. And sometimes the paint doesn't come off of those glass projects. I don't, that's like the first time that I'd had that happen. Usually it comes right off, especially if you're working like with the metal pieces from the Dollar Tree. It's a great way to get a blank canvas. And I'm just going in with an extra coat to make sure it's nice and bright and solid. And I like the little arrows. I think they're super cute. I thought I would rough it up a little bit because it was just a little too perfect looking. So just using a standing sponge and trying to distress it a little bit makes the edges look a little bit more worn, which makes it look a little bit more coastal to me. And this was just a quick, easy little Dollar Tree makeover. So we replaced the back with burlap and we changed the color of the lettering to make a cute little love sign for Valentine's Day. Hey guys, I will post a link below to our private Facebook group if you haven't joined. We would love to see you over there. I love to see when you, what you guys are working on. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. And I also have a Facebook page as well. Okay, this DIY turned out so cute. So another tinsel project from the Dollar Tree. It's the XOXO sign and it's covered in this like sparkly tinsel stuff that Dollar Tree loves to cover, cover their products in. But we're just going to go ahead and take all of that off and it's going to give us a great cage to make our own little XOXO sign. So basically it's pretty easy to unwind these. They have all the little tabs. You can just take them off. If it gets too difficult at any point, you can just go in there with your scissors and kind of cut it off. And I thought we could do something really kind of coastal and fun with this um, instead of that tinsel. So pro tip is these little lint rollers from the Dollar Tree work great at picking up that tinsel and um, glitter. Now, I was afraid that all the little pegs that were sticking out from holding all that tinsel on were going to interfere with our project. So I'm just using some heavy-duty scissors, the little KitchenAid scissors, and I'm just going to go in and trim all those pegs off just so I don't have to worry about trying to cover them in the final project. And as you can see, there are like tons of them. But they do cut off pretty easily if you have a pair of heavy-duty scissors. 
Now we're gonna use the thick nautical rope cotton from the Dollar Tree. This is the six foot one. So this is the thick chunky white. And I thought we could cover the letters with a rope and do some rope letters. So um, I find that my uh, fabric scissors cut through that thick rope better than my strong scissors actually. And I'm just gonna cut out two pieces to cover up all the letters. And then I'm gonna double that up because we have two X's. And so we can kind of make a copy of the first one. It definitely needs two pieces of the thick chunky rope though to cover that because it's a pretty large letter on the sign. And then just going to hot glue the rope to the cage. And we have a perfect little X for an XOXO sign. This was really fun to put together and really easy. You just gotta make sure that you don't burn yourself with your hot glue. I say that yet, you know I do it all the time, right? So we got both of our X's, so now we can start working on our O's. And same thing, it's about two rope thickness to cover up the XOXO. And you know, they have other words as well. I think they have one that says love. So you could do love as well basically the same exact way. And I'm just kind of having the beginning and ending of the O um, kind of meet up at the bottom. Doesn't have to look perfect and those rope edges can actually give you a little bit more character to a project, but I'm not trying to overdo the distress on those. So just a double loop of rope on both O. Now, once you hot glue that much stuff down to that cage, you do kind of have some craziness going on in the back. So I'm just cleaning up all the excess hot glue with some heat. And then this is the nine and a half foot decorative nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. I thought it'd be fun to do the contrasting brown color and a thinner rope like this to cover up these little pieces that connect the X and O's together. And just to kind of act as a bridge between the two, two different kinds of rope and the, the different letters. If you didn't want to do this, you could always just cut the letters apart, but I wanted them to all be one piece like this because it would make the piece easier to hang on my wall for Valentine's Day. So I just start out by hot gluing that to the back, twisting it around a couple times to cover up that connection, and then cutting it and gluing it to the back as well. Easy peasy, and we're gonna do that six times, all the times that the letters are connected. And I like the two different ropes together. I think it provides definitely a nice contrast. It definitely goes with the vibe of the rope letters. So there we have XOXO. It's looking really cute. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use some twine to make a hanger. Kind of pushing that out of the way so I can reattach a hanger at this point. And I'm just gonna tie that twine off to make a simple hanger. Now you could stop at this step because it is super cute. I'm gonna take it another step and decorate it a little bit more and you'll see that here in just a second. I was trying to think of ways, I wanted to kind of cover like the back of the O's with like fishnet or something like that. But you know that fishnet from the Dollar Tree has got like the really thick wide openings in it. So I wanted a smaller fishnet, so I'm gonna use one of these little ombre tote bags from the Dollar Tree. And this one has like the ivory and then it like ombres into pink. And I thought the pink would be perfect for Valentine's Day. We could do like a little pink fishing net for the back of the letters. So I'm just gonna kind of cut the fabric in two, right where the ombre like changes from like ivory to pink to give myself a nice piece of pink material that looks like fishing net, I think. I think this makes a great fishing net. And I thought we could use that to cover the back of the O's. It's gonna give us a pop of color. It's definitely gonna go with the coastal feel of this DIY. So I'm cutting it a little bit bigger than I need it to be. And then I'm just going to stretch it out, hot gluing it to the back of the piece. And this worked out perfectly. I was so glad that I thought to do this. I love working with these little ombre tote bags. If you see them at your Dollar Tree, be sure to pick them up if you do a lot of coastal DIYs, because I use both parts. I like to use the pink ones and I like to use the ivory part as well. 
And it's just a cheap and expensive way to get some fishnet for a DIY. So I'm going to do the same thing here on the other letter. Kind of cutting it to size as I go about gluing it on. I don't want so much fabric that you're going to be able to see it on the outsides of the letters, but I want enough that I can stretch it out and glue it down and kind of give myself a nice netting to the back of the O's. And isn't that cute? I love it. I think it's so fun. I wanted to do one more touch. And so I'm going to use some of these little DIY wood stickers from the Dollar Tree. Just to add another pop of color. And I'm just going to attach those with hot glue to the X's, the pink ones, just for another little punch of pink and another little texture for a little coastal XOXO sign. And this is the final project. I think it looks so cute. Now, I did want the color a little softer on the heart, so I did lighten that up a little bit with that terracotta color because I'm going to be hanging this on the same wall as that other DIY we used that great color for. And this is how it looks hanging on my wall for Valentine's Day. It's so fun. Okay. We're going to do another Valentine heart project, another one of those signs from the Dollar Tree. And look, this is the matching sign that I got at Goodwill. It's the same exact size as that first sign that we made. And so it's going to make a great pair piece. But I'm going to kind of do a whole different thing with this heart than I did on the first one. But I do want them to have the same background. So I'm using that white removable um, wallpaper and like the wood board pattern. And we're going to do exactly like we did before. Um, put that on there, cut another strip and kind of piece that together. It's so easy to work with that wallpaper because you can just start and stop your pattern just like you would if you were wallpapering the wall. And again, you could always paint the sign to begin with, but this was just kind of a time saver and it looks really cute too. Now this had that same black sides of the sign, so I'm just gonna go in and distress that all over with white to kind of give it the same appearance as the white boards for this sign. Now I'm not gonna do like rope love on this sign. I'm gonna kind of decorate this one completely different, but I kind of wanted them to be a set. So I wanted them to have, be the same size and have the same kind of background. This is the other heart. This one's like got like the gray faux wood with the burlap. But again, I'm just going to pull the burlap off there because I want to start from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I just decided to use that as the back. That way I don't have to deal with all that crazy glitter that was on there. And we're just going to decorate the back of this one. And we're going to use some more driftwood. So this is some of that driftwood that I got on Amazon, but I'm going to use that Target driftwood that we used before for the slatted driftwood heart sign. But this is going to be kind of a different kind of a driftwood heart, and it's going to give you like another option if you like want more ideas. About covering the entire heart with the driftwood, but I wanted to kind of leave it this natural color of wood but it was too closely matched with the whiteboard, no contrast whatsoever. And I, so I wanted kind of a pop of pink and I'm gonna use some of these little scrub washcloths from the Dollar Tree. You guys know I'm always crafting with all different kinds of materials I can find for $1.25 at the Dollar Tree. And this is no exception. I thought that would make a great border for our driftwood. And so the colors don't match. It's gonna give me a contrast. I carefully iron that because I don't want that little washcloth to melt. And then I'm just hot gluing that over our little wood heart. This would have been easier to do before I attached the heart to the sign, but you know, we're going to make it work. <laughs> so I hot glued it to the heart and then I am just trimming off the excess fabric. And this is like a great, like mottled pink color. A really cool color and texture to this washcloth. This was the first time I'd ever crafted with those before, but I was a big fan on how this turned out.
Now to cover the seams around the edges, it's a little rough there where I just covered, I'm gonna use some of this thinner brown rope from the Dollar Tree to frame that out. I kind of wish I would have used this thicker rope to frame out the first heart sign that we made. That way they kind of match a little bit more, but I kind of needed to use the thicker one for this one just because I covered it with that thick washcloth and I kind of needed a thicker border. And it's gonna clean up any crazy cutting that took place there from covering that with that washcloth. But isn't that pretty, that material? Who knew like a little scrubbing washcloth could be so pretty? And now I can go ahead and start building. I'm just going to glue my driftwood onto that fabric. And I'm just trying to build out the shape of a heart. So you can see how different the pieces are. And again, just putting it together like a puzzle. Well, I want my end result to look like a heart inside of a heart. <laughs> And I'm kind of working back and forth, kind of going one direction and then kind of going the other, which is gonna kind of give me more of that heart shape and then kind of piecing the pieces together to fill it in. And it might not be the most even heart, but it turned out pretty cute. Now, when you get to like odd areas like this, um, just kind of make it work. You can always glue the pieces to each other, but sometimes you have to go through about five or six pieces to find one that was going to work. That's going to be the perfect shape and size to fill in the hole because I really want to give it the appearance of a heart shape. And then I'm going to keep doing that all along the top part of my heart as well. Just kind of one piece at a time. And this is a driftwood heart sign, but it's totally got a different feel than the first project that we did. And filling in the last few pieces here, trying to cover up all the pink from the washcloth so none of that shows through. And then just trying to find that final couple pieces to kind of give it that arch shape for the top of the heart. And trying to make it look as symmetrical as I can. Now, this is a silicone mold that I got on Amazon. It's linked below in my Amazon shop. And we're gonna make some really cool little seahorses with it. So this is used for like fondant icing and stuff like that. But you can also use hot glue to make your own DIYs with these silicone molds. I think this is such a fun trick. I think this was the first time that I ever did it. I'm just carefully filling in the little seahorse molds with hot glue, trying not to use too much, just enough to fill it in. But if you do do too much, you can always trim it up later. And then I'm going to pop that in the refrigerator for a few minutes to make that set up. I also found some of these little craft board Be Mine at the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree, and I thought this would be really cute on this sign as well. I was trying to decide if I wanted to put it in the corner or on the heart. And I wanna give it a beachy touch, and I'm gonna use this color, which is Caribbean blue, just using a makeup sponge to paint that. You can tell that, you know, the brown color, it's gonna, you have to go over it with a couple coats to kind of get a bright color. And our little seahorses have hardened up. So this is the final reveal of whether it worked or not. I'm just peeling the silicone mold back. And I also have some of these for like sea turtles and such. Such a fun way to make your own decor. And look how cute that is. I did overfill it a tiny bit, so I did have to trim it down a little bit, but man, the texture on these is unbelievable. So I just go in with scissors to trim off any excess hot glue that I don't want there. It's pretty obvious if you do overfill it pretty much exactly where you need to trim it. I'm thinking that if I use like my more fine tip um, hot glue gun, um, I could get like a better, easier fill on those, but this was using my big kind of industrial um, Ryobi glue gun. It likes to squirt out a lot of hot glue. 
But once you have your little silicone mold hot glue things, you can always paint them. So I'm using that same Kirby and blue color and I'm gonna make two little blue seahorses for this project. And this is great if you're doing something off season and you can't get any of like the little wood C shapes. You can always just make things from scratch with just hot glue. I was amazed at how cute these turned out. So I'm gonna use some hot glue on the back of that bee mine, little craft wood piece. And we're gonna put that over here in this corner. And then I want to attach the little seahorses to our little sign as well. And I really like the contrast of the pink against the blue. I thought about putting them on the driftwood heart or putting them in the corner. And I decided to go end up going with the corner on those as well. I kind of want the driftwood heart to kind of stand alone. And I want to do two little like kissing seahorses over here to the right. And I think they look so pretty. And I'm just hot gluing the hot glue on with hot glue. <laughs> So stinking cute. Okay, I wanted to make another quick expo for this one as well. So just using that brown burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna use some of the XOXO ribbon again. That's white and pink. And then we're gonna use some of this Shore Living Seahorse ribbon from the Dollar Tree as well to give us a little pop of blue in that expo. And we're just gonna put them in an X and zip tie this together. cut off the excess zip tie and kind of arrange these and trim them down to size. Expos are my favorite because they're so simple to do. And you can make them out of just about anything. And I thought that'd be a nice little touch here at the top of the heart. We kind of did one on the other heart sign that we're going to be hanging this with. We're going to do this one here on this, the opposite side that we did before. And just glue that on to like the washcloth part of, of the heart. Now, instead of a little rosette for this one, I'm going to use a little seashell with a little touch of pink in there as well. Just something I had from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to hot glue that in the middle of this expo on this side. And this project evolved a lot. It's not originally what I pictured, but I love how it turned out. I think it's so interesting and fun. And check out the texture on those seahorses. I love them. Okay, this is the last Valentine's Day project we have today. And we're going to do a really fun, um, like, Cupid vase full of arrows. And instead of using, like, dowels, I'm going to use some of these long... These are like the little hot dog skewers from the Dollar Tree. They always have these in the summer. And I'm going to cut like three down to size with just my miter scissors. And I'm going to have three dowels. You know, they actually have dowels kind of in this shape at the Dollar Tree now. So you could just buy them like this from the Crafter Square. To give them a little bit more character, I'm going to stain them all with some Antique Wax by Waverly. Kind of going all over and then wiping off the excess with a paper towel. It's going to kind of give them the same finish that we gave on that sailboat earlier. And then I got these feathers at the Crafter Square. And there's lots of colors in there, but really all I want are the red ones. So I'm trying to pick out um, enough red ones to make some arrows. I'm going to simply hot glue the red feathers to the end of the arrows. And I decided I'm going to do like a vase full of arrows. And so you don't have to be able to see all of the arrows. Um, I'm going to have like some with like the feather side up. Kind of trimming those feathers up a little bit. They're a little rough, but we're going to make them work. And then I'll have the other like arrow be like upside down. And so I'll do the heart for the tip. And just to kind of make that look a little bit more finished, I'm just going to use some twine and some hot glue to kind of glue those down, finish that off a little bit where the feather meets the arrow. Now this is gonna be like the point of it. And so I'm gonna use two of those little wood hearts and sandwich that together with hot glue over the dowel. 
and this arrow will be pointing the other direction. And I found this great vase at the Target Dollar Spot. The colors are perfect, white and red. And so I actually don't have to do anything to it. I'm gonna cut a couple of these down so they're not all exactly the same height. And then I did wanna decorate the vase a tiny bit. And so I'm gonna use one of these little wood stickers from the Dollar Tree in the Cupid shape. I thought that was very fitting with the little Cupid's arrows. And just using a makeup sponge, we're gonna paint that red. And I'm just gonna attach that little wood sticker to the vase with some hot glue. And it just really took that little vase up a notch. You could always use a Dollar Tree vase and paint it in the same colors and get about the same effect as this one. I'm also gonna use some twine and some hot glue to kinda add a little bit more texture and fun around the stem of the vase. Just wrapping that around a few times and then gluing it back down. Just a very small customizations on this face, but it made it look super cute for Valentine's Day. And then we can put the arrows in here like this. And we have a little Cupid's vase full of arrows. I really hope you enjoyed these 10 Dollar Tree Valentine's DIYs. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button on this video, comment your favorite Valentine DIY below, and don't forget to subscribe. We're almost to 11,000 and I'm trying to get there by the end of the year. Dry. Do you know I'm looking and I can't help but smile? Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on, I put my feet up and we just sing along and I can't help but feeling just loving.
Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here.